I think the whole country uh, is massively grateful to uh, healthcare workers and social care workers for what they have done. The Royal College of Nursing has set up a strike fund. Trapping don't pay our bills. I feel, uh, to be honest, uh, quite insulted. As, um, give a signal that we're not valued. What do you think of 1%? Well, I think it's pitiful and I'm bitterly disappointed. They were recommending a pay rise for NHS workers of 1% than 1%. 1% pay rise. It's like no difference. <laughs> it, they, it's all faces when it comes to politics. I just don't understand in uh, NHS, okay, before they're giving 2%, they are very clever beca because they will take it back double. I started working in NHS way back uh, 2001 of November. Working in NHS, how has uh, NHS treated you in your time of service? Because you've been working there for over uh, two decades now. 21 years 21. in total, yes, 21 years. Um, you know, in every business, in every offices, anywhere you work, you cannot avoid politics. It's everywhere and it's normal. I say I'm not really into politics, but like saying that politics does affect a lot of people and um, the NHS kind of, you know, centers around that, especially having mama work in it. You have to, to be strong so that you can earn their trust and they will help you as you move along. You have to grow, you have to, you have to work hard. If you could just tell us briefly how you became a nurse. And... Okay, I am Asian, I am a Filipino, and you know, our culture, because I, my family is poor, I saw our life, and when I, when I was studying, I told myself, I have to help my parents and my siblings. I asked God uh, if he can help me. So that time, and even at this very moment, nursing is really, uh, we can say that it's a green pasture. You know, you can, you can work anywhere, you can earn anywhere you go, any part of the world. So I decided to take nursing, even if I don't know what is nursing about. I was the person who Mama will kind of look to eventually in terms of financials as well in, in the family, right? Um, you know, that's why she wanted me to be a nurse was to, uh, because to, you know, to earn money. Um, and to have that education as well. Uh, I work in Saudi Arabia for, in the mom, for about uh, 11 years. And then I met the father of my children. So we decided to go home and started a family. Uh, it was a mistake. Anyway, that's, <laughs> that's my past. So, my, I have a brother he, here in London, and he told me that, uh, what are you waiting for? Why are you not coming over? So he was the one who helped me. So I decided to come here. It was not easy. You know, life is not like a bed of roses, especially when you are starting. Anything, uh, when you are starting, it's always difficult. Yeah? So... I left Philippines again, came here, and um, up to this very moment, I'm band six. I think that nursing staff coming off of a, a shift, uh, tired and already demoralized, working hard, will be heartbroken and angry. And after all the heartfelt gratitude directed towards NHS workers, they had hoped for something more tangible. In terms of how they treat mama, it's like uh, she had to work super hard to where she is now. Uh, we had to think of where, you know, 
where she's going to be even after the NHS. Um, I know like compared to the NHS, she, she will probably earn more, a lot in private sectors. You cannot avoid as well. It's everywhere, you know. If they don't like you, they will treat you bad. But you have to fight. You have to fight back in a positive way. You have to show them that you can do it. You have to show them your capability, uh, what you know, and what you can do. So I earn it. That's why at the moment I'm happy because I'm a senior staff nurse in uh, in theater. And, and I'm working. I can say that I'm happy working with them at the moment. Salary-wise, you see, uh, there are a lot of um, people who are on strike because they want their salary rise. I just don't understand in uh, NHS. Okay, before they're giving 2%, um, 2 percent, yeah? And then we, they, they are very clever beca because they will take it back double by our taxes, through taxes. So they will give 2% and they will take 4%, something like that. Yeah, that's the thing, right? You think like after she retires, she would still be, she will be set for life. But no, she still has to keep working within the kind of, in healthcare. The money the, the NHS provides her, I don't think is enough as well. You know, I think f for each family to, different situation but for us I think it's I don't think it's enough I know mama gets taxed a lot as well so that doesn't help so our union a lot of unions um, I my union is unison and really fighting for a pay rise um, it's not only unison um, oh actually this year they gave uh, I don't know how many percent is that, but it's they added uh, 1,400 or 200 in a year, for one year. That's all they gave, but uh, it's not enough. It's not, I think it's not fair because NHS, you know, nurses, the medical fields, we are all working hard for the patients. So I don't know what is happening but uh, I heard that uh, they are planning to strike as well. So from that would you say um, NHS workers are treated unfairly and underappreciated? Pay rise, uh, yes. So what's, what is happening, nurses are working extra. We call it uh, agency. When you work in your hospital, we call it bank. So it's a bit higher. That's why I work more than my hours. My hours is 37.5 uh, a week. I am working more than that because when I am off, I have to work to have extra. Or else my, my salary itself, it won't, yeah, it's not enough. It's not enough for the family. Thousands of staff are responsible for keeping the NHS running. That hasn't been easy. But I'm just really sad that I can't be a nurse in the NHS without sacrificing my mental health for it. NHS, it helps me a lot. My family, uh, you know, I'm the breadwinner in the family, so it really helps me a lot. I have. I just have a, a deep regret in my life because, you know, living here in, in London is not easy, especially when you have a little ones, when you have kids, you have to, when they are very little, you have to pay someone to look after them. And I realized that uh, you're just working for them, for the nanny, for the caregiver. So it's, it's not working. Uh, I'm just working for their salary. So what happened was uh, my husband uh, stopped working so that he will look for he will look after the kids while I'm I'm working. And then after a year or so, we realized 
it's not easy you know uh, life here in London you ha- you really have to work hard for it um, so my husband decided we and uh, me and my husband decided to send my kids back home but then still I regret those years because it's really difficult I have two kids and I left them in the Philippines so after a year I took back one of them and after another year uh, we are all reunited something so many things happened in my life Uh, it's not easy but you know we have to move on Um, well when we were kids she was a work a lot. Sometimes I would think I wouldn't barely see her. I mean, yeah, I mean, she works long hours all day. And, um, yeah, but no, I still, you know, I think as you grow up, you kind of realize that, you know, you have to cherish. <laughs> so, you have to cherish, like, your parents more basically like, I appreciate like how much time mama worked away from us and how much she provided for us um, while well, she was out there working uh, Papa was also working nights as you said I can tell so when he works nights mama works days um, you can imagine <laughs> we sometimes we, we, it feels like we don't have parents in the house and uh, yeah, so as an older sister, I took on the responsibility in taking care of my younger brother. When I took them back, because I have to work, I have to leave them at home. Uh, there was a time that uh, the, just the two of them, my daughter and my son, um, when I opened the door, I heard them crying. and. Uh, I said, don't cry uh, because mama is here already. Uh, It's really difficult for me. Um, We love them for the sacrifice they made for us. And I think the hardship is is that we're in turn because the responsibility is similar for me. I wouldn't say it's the same, but it's it's very similar in terms of I'm trying to do the same thing, but I don't want to make the mistakes that Mama did. But I have to work. I have to work. I have to pay the bills. I have, you know, uh, we have we have to pay the the mortgage and the food every day. Yeah, but I experience really. We have nothing. Because it's sometimes good to be selfish, you know? Yeah, she's very selfless when it comes to us. Um, she will always put us first before she puts herself first. You know, um, Mama's hardworking. But when it comes to herself, she sometimes doesn't even know where to start. You know, and um, I want to help her in terms of that. I don't want her to be working as a nurse forever. It's one of um, the struggles of being uh, kind of the eldest in the family. So, yeah. But then God is so good for, to us. I'm so sorry. China has identified the cause of the mysterious new virus. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. The death toll now has risen above that of the SARS outbreak 17 years ago. We now have a name for the disease, COVID-19. Without a huge national effort to halt the growth of this virus, there will come a moment when no health service in the world could possibly cope. The Prime Minister has announced the most drastic limits to our lives that the UK has ever seen in living memory. 
The aim, he says, is to save lives in this time of national emergency. Because there won't be enough ventilators, enough intensive care beds, enough doctors and nurses. The respiratory disease, which causes pneumonia-like symptoms, has infected almost 84,000 people in more than 50 countries. COVID-19 can be characterised as a pandemic. And as we've seen elsewhere in other countries that also have fantastic healthcare systems, that is the moment of real danger. While well, there have been sharp falls in global stock markets because of concerns over coronavirus, the total cost of this week's plunge in values has been more than $5 trillion. Countries around the world have now reported more than 1 million coronavirus cases. To put it simply, if too many people become seriously unwell at one time, the NHS will be unable to handle it. Could you describe your time during that pandemic? Oh my God, it was so scary, really scary. Uh, we don't know, uh, there's uncertainty. Everybody afraid, everybody so scared. Whenever we have um, patients positive to COVID, because we have to operate a patient, everybody if we can escape we will escape but most of the times you have no choice i mean mama's you know you know mama she's very she's very tough um <laughs> she will lap everything i mean it's not to her it's it's a job and it's not as serious as you thought i mean she did she did lose quite a few co-workers. Uh, actually, we lost one. Uh, I think um, my colleague, he was retiring actually. He was retiring that year. I think he has a health issue. And um, he, she was working in a, in a medical ward. It's not a surgical ward, medical ward. And that's the start of uh, you know, the peak of the COVID. And he, and she was dealing with a patient, maybe they're not aw aware that the patient was positive or what, or I don't know. And uh, because um, it's new to everyone, we are all, it's like a trial and error, you know. They tried all the medications, they give this, they give that. We are not yet prepared, we're just, you know, we're just uh, trying to, to protect ourselves, uh, ITU occupy half of the half of the building, and uh, it's always full. And uh, staff, uh, if you can see them, they are like astronauts. You know, they have to cover themselves with this white thing and everything. Um, it's not easy. It's difficult. But now I can say that uh, we we can handle it. And, I mean, during COVID, right, they, <laughs> they put a lot of promotion in terms of the NHS. And, like, it's so different. Like, um, so they say they appreciate them, but you see a lot of nurses during COVID coming back from retirement. Mama pushed her retirement just so she can help out in, like, beating this um, pandemic. You were supposed to retire quite some time ago. I know, it's yeah. because of COVID. Yeah. It's exactly that time, the COVID. Okay. Yeah, oh. the peak of the COVID, yes. yes. Um, because if I retire that time, because during the COVID, the, there was no agency. Mm. Yeah, I still have to work after retirement. I still have to, to you know, to earn um, because we still need it. Rishi Sunak has failed patients, he's failed the NHS, and he's failed NHS staff. Um, and I think that the health secretary clearly has no intention of fighting for us, despite what he says. He clearly thinks that clapping and wearing a badge saying care um, is enough. Well, it's not. Yeah, but how do you feel about retiring though? I'm scared, actually. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's a mixed feeling. Um, I'm scared. Uh, first, I will miss my friends. I will miss the place. You know, I worked there for 21 years. Um, I will still work, definitely. 
uh, it's not yet time to retire totally. I will retire only as NHS, um, you know, staff. Yeah. I think that's kind of what ex- uh, upsets me when, when she's like she will still be working even um, when she retires because I don't think anything will change in terms of like our family, right? It's still going to be the same where she's going to be working. I haven't um, left UK for some time for holiday. I think it's more than 15 years. That's long. Yeah, so I'm planning to go home and visit my family there. And it's only like this sliver of time where she has with us. And I'm, you know, I think, I hope you agree with me. It's like, we will we will try to make the most of it with her. You know, mama's not getting any younger, like. Um, I am chasing properties for my children. It's not for me. And I'm working hard for my children. You know, I'm old. Anytime I can go and I want my children to have something from me. I I want them to have, you know, to start with and have a good future. That's my dream and that's, you know, and then I will be very happy if they will be stable when I leave.